Hi everyone, this is a quick video uh, to demonstrate how to create a bar graph in Excel 2010. Uh, the directions for how to do this or the steps that you follow are pretty much the same as what you would use for Excel 2007. So if you have that version on your computer, uh, the way that I'm doing this will work for you as well. What I'm looking at here is a data sheet that's got our um, cardiovascular data set and body measurement data set that we took in class. Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate first how to create a bar graph using this data. Now whenever I'm working with a large data set like this that I want to manipulate in various ways, the first thing that I do is actually copy the whole data set to a new sheet and that way I know I'm not going to mess anything up uh, or at least if I do it's not a fatal error. I can always go back to um, the original sheet. So the way that to do that, the easiest way to do that is just click in this little left hand uh, upper left hand square and if you do that you'll see that the entire sheet gets selected and then you can just do copy paste uh, I'm just going to use control C ah, I'm just going to use control C uh, to do that easily which is a nice shortcut on a PC and then control V to paste it in alright now I'm going to do a bar graph comparing let's say um, smokers and non-smokers and their resting heart rate Okay, so what I'm going to do, hmm, mouse is being a little bit touchy here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of everything that I don't need on this sheet. Remember that I copied it over so I can do that. Ooh, okay, my mouse is really being tricky. Delete. Delete and delete all the rest of the data. Whoops. Delete all that rest of that data. Okay, so now I'm left with just the data that I want to investigate or graphically display. Um, right now I've got my smokers and non-smokers kind of interspersed throughout the data column. So first thing I want to do is actually sort this data. So I'm going to select both columns and then I'm going to go up to the data menu and click sort and notice that this little uh, checkbox here is already checked my data has headers. Excel is smart enough to figure out that these two headings on these columns are significantly different from the rest of the information that's in those columns and it's figured out that those are my headers. So I'm going to leave that checked and I'm going to tell Excel to sort my data by smoker or non-smoker, A to Z. So non-smokers will be listed first. So now you can see that all of my non-smoker data is collected together and down here all of my smokers data is collected together. Alright so what I want to actually graph is the average resting heart rate for this whole group of individuals, my non-smokers and then that whole group of smokers. So I'm going to use a formula to have Excel do that calculation for me and the way that you do that is you type an equal sign and then whatever formula you want Excel to calculate. In this case I want to get the average or mean so I'm going to type average and then open parentheses is essentially the signal to Excel that you're now going to tell it what numbers you want it to do that calculation with. So type an open parentheses and then select your data that you want average. So all of my no's and then if you just hit enter there's the average. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my smokers down here equals average, open parentheses, and select the data. And there's my average. Okay, so here's what I want to actually graph. There's my non-smokers average. On a PC you can hold down the control key and select multiple data series. So that's what I'm doing here. I held down the control key and now I've selected my smokers data. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to paste those. Oops, forgot to copy. Select control select and copy that. And I'm going to paste it over here but all I'm going to paste is uh, the values. I don't want to paste the formulas. Uh, sometimes Excel can get confused when you move data around from its original spot and it still has a formula embedded within it. So I'm going to click paste special and select just values. This way the only thing that's actually being pasted is the numerical quantity there, the average. Alright, so this is my what's going to be my label on my graph and so I'm going to make this a little easier to understand here. This is non 
smokers and this is smokers okay all right now <clears throat> I'm ready to graph this and create a bar graph so what I'll do is select my data and my labels go up here to the insert tab and in Excel you have a couple of options what they call a bar graph is uh, horizontal bars they call the type of bar graph that has vertical bars a column graph and that's fine just select a column graph uh, you'll have fewer problems if you just stick with the basic 2d column if you start getting into any of these weird three-dimensional graphs uh, sometimes you'll have trouble when you try to put error bars on so stick with just the 2d and here we have it so here's my non-smokers, here's my smokers. Um, we can see that Excel uh, did something that uh, we don't want to do, uh, and that's it, it, it has uh, set the values or the range of this y-axis uh, to maximize the difference between these two groups. But uh, it's really misleading to do that uh, in presenting your data. You don't want to do that unless you have a very good reason to do that. Um, and just trying to make it look as big as possible is not a very good reason so we want to change that axis now again on the PC you can do this very easily by just using a right click and selecting format axis and then you can tell Excel that you don't want the minimum uh, value of that axis to be automatically set you want it to start at zero you're telling Excel you want that to start at zero now if we get out of this we'll see that's much more reasonable that the di actual difference between non-smokers and smokers was not that great okay now I don't need this little label over here I'm gonna get rid of it and you can just select any element that you don't want and, and hit delete okay so I'm okay with my x-axis here it's got labels uh, my y-axis doesn't have labels though so let me show you how to select a chart layout that's going to give you text boxes that you can type in uh, to add those labels and a title on your graph if you want to do that alright so notice uh, that when I have the chart selected I have this menu up here that says chart tools and then I've got a design menu a layout menu and a format menu that's only available if you have the chart selected very often uh, you'll be graphing your data and you'll be clicked off of the graph that you're trying to fix uh, and manipulate and you'll be looking for the menu that allows you to do that and it's gone it only shows up if you actually select the graph so select the graph go to design and under the design menu you see this option for different chart layouts if you click on this drop down menu you'll see all the possible layouts for charts that are available right these are all the defaults uh, now I know it's hard to see but if you look really closely you can see that on this graph there's a space for a title there's a space for a y-axis label there's a space for an x-axis label and a legend this is the one that that we want so click on that and there you see that we've got all those text boxes available to type in all right uh, now again I don't need this I'm gonna get rid of it and in Excel it's really easy to get rid of stuff you don't want just click on it delete uh, I don't really need this for this particular graph because my x-axis is already labeled with the two categories that I'm comparing so I can get rid of that uh, for this particular graph uh, my y-axis though I do need to label uh, more fully and that is going to be what did I graph resting heart rate so I'm gonna type in resting heart rate and that is in beats per minute you always want to include your units now on informal graphs for example a graph that you are just including in your lab notebook um, it's not part of your formal lab report uh, it's fine to give your graph a title just like maybe you've done in chemistry uh, where you might refer to this data as being uh, average resting heart rate in smokers and non-smokers in bio 204 All right maybe that's uh, an appropriate title that you might type for that um, but I do want to make sure that you're aware uh, that for bio 204 specifically when you do your formal lab write-up your graphs need to be presented in the same format that figures are presented in journal articles and so you would have a more detailed figure legend that would be underneath the graph now you can use this text box um, for the title uh, to do that uh, you can move these elements around you can grab that title and move it to the bottom grab your plot area 
move it to the top, and then you could type your figure legend in that box. You could also just copy your uh, chart, <clears throat> excuse me, you could ch copy your chart into Word or PowerPoint and add text boxes uh, for figure legends if you wanted to do that instead. Either one will work. All right, I'm going to undo that and put this back the way it was. There we go. Okay, so there's your graph. Uh, you've got your data plotted. Um, your x-axis categories are appropriately labeled, your y-axis is appropriately labeled, and you've got a descriptive title on that graph. Alright, hope you found that helpful.